Okay, so we are out today and we are doing something a little bit different. I've got both dogs out with me, which is something I have done once before. It went terribly wrong um, and I've not done it again since. So hopefully it will be better than that. Um, at the moment I have got Tia, if you can see her Where is she? tied up. She's going to wait the first round uh, whilst I work this little one. Um, and then we will swap over. I'm going to do heel work with both dogs. I'm going to do stop whistle with both dogs. Obviously they're both at different levels so we will tailor the exercises to suit each dog um, and hopefully they will be chilled while the other dog is working although I'm, I'm not that hopeful. I feel like it could go horribly wrong still um, but we will wait and see. So let's get on with it. Okay, so we'd been walking around for about a minute or so before this clip started and all I'm trying to do is get her to settle into the environment. So she'd had an exciting burst running around chasing leaves off lead. Um, so I am allowing her that time to settle in. When she pulls, just getting her to come back into position and then setting off again. And I'm marking and rewarding her when she is connected with me and when she is walking with me. Um, on reflection, I could increase my rate of reinforcement here, but we finished there on a good one um, and then gave her a little break. Um, I've just finished on a good rep and now I'm giving her a break and I'm gonna bring Tia out. I feel like you may hear a lot of whining um, behind the camera for this bit because I'm not sure Ivy's going to settle, but we shall see. So in this exercise, I'm practicing heel work with Tia. We started off just doing a couple of reps, walking up and down, um, making sure that she was switched on and able to achieve basic heel work in this environment, which she was, which was great. So then we moved on to playing about with pace. So you'll see I'm walking really fast and then I also experimented with slowing down. I don't say anything before I do that and she just needs to be connected and walking with me um, to stay in position by my side so the lead doesn't go tight. So what we are doing now is practicing our heel work in the presence of some distraction. So you'll see that I am currently placing out some items in a line. Um, I've got some tennis balls, some rabbit balls and a dummy. And I'm going to get here walking up and down past those distractions with me. So to start this exercise off, I am walking so that I am between Tia and the distractions and I've done this intentionally to try and make it successful. If you'll notice there that it wasn't, that rabbit dummy was a little bit too tempting. So the next rep that we did, we moved further away um, and got success healing past them at a further distance. And then we repeat the same distance that we were at previously to make sure that we get success and we did um, and then did the same along the other side so repeating similar levels of criteria getting success and rewarding her at the end okay so here you'll notice she pulls slightly towards the items so we just reset and then the exercise we're working on here is weaving in and out of the items you'll notice that I'm recording her more frequently because it's harder but she does really really well um, and then the final exercise we worked on was walking over the top of the items while that lead stayed loose. And she did really well, so finished on a nice little scatter feed there. Okay, so I am going to do some work on stop whistle with Ivy. Uh, so the idea of this activity is that I'm creating a reinforcement zone around the post. So the food always lands behind the posts um, and I'm always throwing it to land behind Ivy. Um, the idea yeah. of this is that well it done. teaches her that when she hears a stop whistle, she gets reinforced away from me and that should hopefully prevent her from creeping in. You'll also notice that as we're starting to get success with this, I start to take some steps backwards and that's helping to build some distance between me and her when I'm blowing the stop while she remains around the posts. Okay, so then on to some stop whistle work with Tia. Now Tia's got quite a strong stop whistle, so the exercise that I'm doing here, I've put out some food piles for her to sniff and search for, and while her nose is down and she's searching, I blow the stop whistle, she stops, 
I then mark it and redirect her towards the next food pile. Um, this is a good exercise because it means you get to test if your dog really understands and is listening to the whistle and not just your body language cues because she can't see them because her head is down. Uh, she stops beautifully both times and on that time she gets rewarded with the ball. So then the last activity I'm doing with Tia is putting some food in a food bowl, walking away, I'm then going to line and centre for the food and then stop her on the way. I'm not bothered if she stops in a stand or a sit, um, I just want her to stop and face me because ultimately if she was ever working and she's in some rough ground, I don't really want to force her to put her bum down on the floor so I'm happy with a standing stop um, and then she gets rewarded with the throw of the ball. So after stopping beautifully, I threw the ball as a reward for her and then she started to be a wally, as you can see, um, which is why we have the long line attached to the harness so that I can safely stop her and bring her back in um, when she decides to have a bit of a moment. And then look at her, it's like butter wouldn't melt. Okay, so yesterday I did a training session with both dogs. I took them both out together, which is something I don't normally do. Um, and at the time I found it really stressful and I thought that it went appallingly but I have spent um, some time today reviewing the videos and reviewing the footage that I took and actually both dogs did all right. Um, Ivy took a little while to settle and Tia had a little moment at the end where she didn't bring the ball back but they actually both performed quite well. So then I was trying to think, well, why did I find it such a stressful experience if they were performing okay? And I think it was our transitions and it didn't start particularly well. So I got there and I bought my little whirly gig thing to put in the ground to attach one dog to. And I thought I'll leave the dogs in the car, take all my equipment and set ourselves up. So we've got a station area ready and then go and get the dogs. So I'm not carrying dogs and equipment at the same time. Um, I did that and my whirly gig wouldn't go in the ground, um, so that annoyed me. So then I had to go and find somewhere else where I'd be able to secure one dog while I worked the other. So I found a tree but it was halfway up the field. Um, so went and left my equipment there and then got the dog. So I got the dogs out of the car um, and they were pulling, they were getting themselves tangled with each other. Ivy was walking like circles around me so... Um, it, it wasn't a particularly great start. Tia then went to the toilet, and while she was going to the toilet, Ivy was circling around, chasing after leaves. Um, and then she pulled, and her lead unclipped from her harness. So then she was off lead, running around, chasing leaves, and having a lovely time. So um, that whole thing was quite stressful. I couldn't deal with her while I was picking up who and had Tia on the lead and it, it was all a bit chaotic to start. So I think that probably didn't put me in the best mindset. Um, um, so then we got to location, I tied Tia to the tree while I had Ivy out and we started the session. It did take Ivy a little while to settle but she had had a lot of excitement just happening um, prior so that makes perfect sense. Um, while I was practicing with Ivy, we had a friendly dog come up to Tia, so that interrupted our session as I had to go and get her because I wasn't very comfortable with her being tied to a tree while there was another dog loose that we didn't know in her face. Um, so that interrupted and caused a little bit of stress because that dog then also had a little grizzle at Ivy. Um, and then we got going again and the training sessions, as I say, they were actually alright, but the Bits in between were a bit stressful, I think. So getting everything set up, um, when I would come back and try and talk to the camera, I would have Tia barking at me or Ivy crying because she wasn't with me. And I think that made it stressful for me, but actually the training um, and how the dogs performed was okay. So whilst yesterday I was adamant that I was never gonna be doing that again and that was awful and a stupid idea, um, on reflection, I think I was maybe just a little bit emotional and maybe I will try it again. Not today, um, but maybe I won't wait quite so long before giving it another go because actually after a while both dogs did start to settle quite nicely while the other was working um, and that was kind of the idea of bringing them both out together. So it won't improve if I don't practice it, I just need to be more aware of my own emotions um, and try and not get so stressed out over the little things. 
but also try and focus more on how I can manage those transitions between working each dog and setting up each activity um, without it causing chaos. This is stressful. Can't even Stuck. Filming forever. Not working. <laughs>